Hello there! Today, I never thought I would say this on my channel, I'm going to be talking about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child Parts 1 and 2 by J.K. Rowling, Jack Thorne, and John Tiffany. If you are unaware of what this is, this is the 8th Harry Potter story told 19 years after the Battle of Hogwarts. It picks up right where we left off from 19 years later at the end of Deathly Hallows. So yes, you have to have read all Harry Potter books to read this. This is not a novel though, this is a play. The play premiered at the Palace Theatre in London, and it is legitimately the 8th Harry Potter story for the rest of the world who does not get to see the show in London. The play has been released in script form, in book form. This is getting a lot of mixed reviews from both booktubers and my friends who I know have read it. It's really been hard to watch, honestly. I was really nervous when all of the hype for this was happening because, you know, like, it's not an eighth Harry Potter book. This is not a novel of J.K. Rowling's beautiful writing. There's much less detail. We get dialogue and we get what the character is doing. The rest of it comes out in the acting and the performance art that goes on on stage. So I really, 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 really want to see this play. There's so much stuff that I'm so curious as to how they did it. I'm sure it's beautiful. There are scenes that just like sent chills down my spine because, you know, just picturing the way that they did things. Man, this story was awesome. There were some really beautiful moments that I'm sure were incredible to watch on stage. I envy anyone who could go. I'm sure one day in several years it will be like in New York or Chicago. Another reason I was nervous was that I was someone who really did not want a book eight. Like of course it would be nice but I was content with the ending, you know, like I knew what happened in my head, in my mind everything was happily ever after. So it was really hard to watch all of these characters after watching them have closure. It's not a spoiler to say that a lot of shit happens with Harry, Ron, and Hermione in this book, but there's so much more to it. I'll let you know before I start like actually discussing. I do love the excitement that it brought back about Harry Potter. There are new people reading the books and watching the movies now that didn't before. Tons and tons of bookstores had midnight release parties that were so fun and just brought fans back together. You got to open the box and hold it up at midnight and you know, like, I only got to go to one Harry Potter midnight release, and I didn't even get to go to the party. I just got the book at midnight, um, because I was really young in 2007. But otherwise, I was not there for any of the releases. I started reading Harry Potter in second grade, and finished in fourth grade. So reading this was crazy for me. The other thing is, like, with it being told in play form, it does not take a long time to read this. The pages look like this. Part of me, after reading the story, wants to read it in novel form, but I also just want to see the stage play, so I'm conflicted. At this point, you know, like, now that J.K. Rowling has said, like, this is what happens, I would read another play, like, I would read another book, I would watch another movie. I'm excited for Fantastic Beasts, too. The trailers look fantastic. I haven't even read that book, but do we need to? I will. The truth is that this is not a new Harry Potter book, and people are treating their disappointment like it's a new Harry Potter book. Like, yes, it's totally a Harry Potter story that comes from J.K. Rowling, and now I think I'm gonna start to spoil stuff. So if you have not read Harry Potter and the Cursed Child yet, I read it literally last night. I just, I sat over there, and I read it till 4 a.m., and it did not take very long, except I was up till 4 a.m. I definitely recommend reading this, forming your own opinion, so go read it and then come back. I'm excited to discuss certain things. So please go away if you haven't read this. I don't want to spoil anything. I really think you should go into this not knowing anything. Go away, go away. <gasps> okay, so a big complaint of many people are the plot holes and the way that it kind of has like a fan fiction feel. And that's where I would reply, you are reading a script. Was I frustrated sometimes getting into it because I secretly wanted it to be an 8th Harry Potter book? Yes. By the time I got to Act 2, though, I was, like, so into it. I was excited. I was, like, running around my basement reading. I had such a good time with this story. I really appreciated this for what it was. And I think I would appreciate it even more if I could see the stage play. So with it being a play, there's definitely, like, a sense of vision and place that we don't get um, just by reading it ourselves. You know, like, we have our own visions and we're picturing, like, a movie because that's what we do as readers. We picture movies in our head. The most frustrating thing, I guess, was that reading the seven books, there's a sense of connection between all of them. Like, there was a plan, the story is fleshed out, and they all go together, they make sense. Reading Cursed Child, it felt like an addition, like, we're trying to add things, we're trying to, like, change the way 
that things had happened before. Like, oh, Bellatrix had this kid this one time, and like now we're going back in time to things that happened in book four that, you know, now are happening a different way. Like in the Triwizard Tournament in the maze, Cedric being slowed down by seeing these guys, I feel like would change so much more. But we didn't really have time to delve into that, and that was okay. But anyway, beyond that, I was so excited seeing where everyone is all these years later. I could not believe that Hermione was Minister of Magic. I was so happy. That's so fitting. It was one of the hardest things to watch when she was the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher. Everything got so stressful. I was like, this is why you don't mess with Harry Potter after the seventh book. This stuff happens. Everything is different now. At the end of Act 2, when we met Professor Umbridge, and she said it was Voldemort's world, I gasped and I closed the book and like ran. This book was such a crazy journey, I can't even tell you. The stress, things were sad and frustrating. There were tons of characters that I was so excited to see though. The trolley witch and her entire story just kind of cracks me up. You know, the way it's described where she's like on top of the train, it's like that scene in Polar Express with, with the ghost guy. That's kind of how I was picturing it, but I just wanted to watch it because it was probably a really intense scene, but it was kind of just funny reading it. I did love seeing Snape. That entire section of Act 3 was incredibly stressful to watch, but it was so intense and really powerful. And Hermione and Ron are like hiding in the Whomping Willow. We know in our hearts that this is not how it's gonna end up, but it's like this is the alternate reality. Like where we are now, that is what happened. And that just, for someone who's been a Harry Potter fan most of his life, you like you know what happened in the end and this story messes with that and that's what like pissed me off reading it so much. That's why I felt like I was content with book seven because I really don't want to mess shit up anymore. Of course though, by the time I got to the end, I was definitely on board with it. I loved the way that it ended. Harry and his problems with his son, it was really real. I liked Albus's character, he made sense, and Scorpius, I loved, he was so fun. Albus's journey with Slytherin, when we found out that he was Gryffindor in this other world because of freaking Ron's daughter, like all of those little things, you know, just like a ripple creating a tidal wave, it was so insane. Every time they would go back in time, it would remind me of Magic Treehouse when they would go back in time. It was like the, the wind started to blow and the tree started to shake and then everything was silent absolutely silent and then in this it's like time stops and thinks a minute and then goes back like every time it was the same and it kind of just made me chuckle because it reminded me of Magic Treehouse when it was the same every time at the end of the first chapter. The scene at the end when Voldemort comes from the back, the way that it read it sounded like he walked into the house to kill Harry's parents and Harry's standing there on stage watching it happen. He has all of his friends around him and Albus is there and Scorpius is there and I just can't imagine how emotional that scene is to watch. I mean it's emotional to read too but it's totally different. The biggest thing I got from this was that I want to see the play. I feel like I just know what the story is and I really just want to watch it happen. I feel like I have read an extended synopsis of a book that I want to read. Like I want to see more. I want to see like fleshed out details and, and the scenes that kind of just got swept over for understandable reasons because it's a long story. I wasn't expecting Cedric Diggory and just his entire life to have such a big part in this and uh, for most of it, it kind of bothered me. It felt like a reach that he would be the center of all of this stuff that Albus is doing. But then it totally made sense because of Delphi's plan. You know, it would be genius of her to to pick that moment and what happened there. Overall, I enjoyed Harry Potter and the Cursed Child parts one and two for, for what it was. You know, again, it's not a Harry Potter book and I'm not gonna treat it like it is. There's not nearly as much substance and life as there would be in a JK Rowling novel and we just, ha we just have to accept that. And that's why I was nervous when I was at like the release party for the new Harry Potter book. Of course people are disappointed. I really enjoyed it though. I had such a great time reading it. This made me sad. It made me nostalgic. This was full of really great moments that I'm sure played out beautifully on stage. I would love to hear your thoughts on Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Were you frustrated? Did you kind of go with it? What did you think about the story in general? Leave a comment and we'll start a discussion below. I'll leave all the links to my social media in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys very soon and have a good one. Goodbye.